I don't see enough other companies outside of the crypto space. There are some. I'm not. I'm not saying there are none, but I, I think there needs to be more so that the job opportunities are available for uh, for graduates. Hey everyone, welcome to Blockchain North, Canada's first blockchain media. Today I have the pleasure of speaking with Morali Srinarayanatas, who describes himself as a third culture Canadian business leader, investor and philanthropist. I know him as an entrepreneur and an advocate for Canadian immigrants who became Blockchain North's first uh, founding sponsor in January this year. For this, a very big thank you, Morali. Uh, before I begin, if you enjoy these interviews, make sure to support us by following and liking or sharing our video on whatever platform you're watching it uh, and hit the notification bell to make sure you don't miss any of our upcoming videos and we have many coming up. Um, and make sure to stay till the end because as always, I'm going to ask Morali his thoughts on the future of blockchain and of Canada and the causes that he cares about. So uh, stay tuned and thank you for watching. So nice to have you on the channel, Morali. Big welcome. Thank you so much, Flo. It's great to be here. Great to see you again, my friend. Absolutely. Long overdue, I'd say, but here we are. So I want to first ask you, how did you first get involved with blockchain? Oh, wow. Um, so uh, the first time was uh, I was part of a company uh, in the fintech space. Uh, we went public in 2012. Yes, 2012. And around 2014, um, I saw around that time, I saw this um, uh, Bitcoin uh, machine like ATM or, or something set up on, on Spadina. And uh, I think uh, I think, you know, the gentleman who set that up, I believe it was Anthony, um, who, who was part of uh, one of the founders of Ethereum. And uh, so that got me curious, what, what was that about? And I connected with a few folks since we were in the fintech space, had some conversations, and I wasn't one of the founders of uh, that company, but um, worked directly with one of the founders. And we kind of presented and, and spoke about what, uh, what the opportunities were. The company didn't end up um, taking up that opportunity, but that was really my first introduction. And um, it still had a lot of negative um, uh, descriptions at that time in terms of how people or why people were using Bitcoin. Um, but for me, I just saw a huge potential. And I had exited from a tel telco uh, business in the UK uh, a couple of years prior to that. And I just saw how technology was skyrocketing. And especially during my work in, in Asia, seeing the uh, leaps and bounds that um, Asia was going through in terms of mobile technology was tremendous. So that was my first experience and um, I've been hooked ever since. Yeah, well, I want to dig a little bit deeper in that, uh, you know, passion that you seem to have for blockchain because you're not active in blockchain yourself, at least uh, not professionally from what I see. And I'll ask you a bit about that soon as well. But, um, you know, you decided to sponsor Blockchain North, full disclosure, people can see it. It's on our website at the end of our videos. Um, and you are still to date our founding sponsor. So a big thank you uh, for, for believing in us. Uh, can you speak a bit to the potential that you see um, for blockchain in Canada more broadly for, I want to say for people even, not just for business? Sure. So I think, you know, uh, Canada was a leader on, on a lot of levels in this space. And I think there is opportunity to show more leadership there. So I'm quite bullish on um the players within Canada that are that are working in this sector. Um, so the opportunity to be here in Canada and to be around folks like that and the companies that they're building, I think, is is extremely exciting. Um, Blockchain North is is really important to me because there's a lot of um, uh, as it happens in new technologies and, and, and new information, there's a lot of good characters and bad characters. And I think it's really important to communicate the right information to folks, um, the right kinds of companies that are doing uh, important things 
And it really gives um, for a lot of people in, in the regulatory industry um, or everyday customers some sense of where we can, where we kind of need to put regulation, where we need to create some, you know, more exploration, et cetera. It's really information sharing. And, you know, um, Flo, you come from the media space, of course. So this critical uh, uh, kind of curation of information is, is important, having that trusted voice. And so that's why Blockchain North is important to me. Um, because I think the opportunities in blockchain are tremendous at all levels in society um, and, and around the world. So having the right source of information is critical. Well, thanks for the shout out. And yes, as they say in the industry, signal, not noise. So we'll keep focusing on the signal yes. because there is a lot of noise in this uh, kind of wild west that is uh, blockchain or crypto uh, to date. And I think still a lot of negative uh, descriptions, as you said, uh, to date, but yes. perhaps we're on the cusp of some major change, fingers crossed. Um, I'm wondering because the way I see you is first and foremost as an entrepreneur, um, as well as an advocate, but entrepreneur is what I want to sort of uh, hone in on a little bit. Um, do you support or do you invest in blockchain right now, other again than your sponsorship of, of this channel? Uh, or do you plan to? And if you do, what are you going to be looking at in terms of use cases, in terms of who the technology will be serving, for example, because I know you're very focused on, on, on the humans. Correct. Yes. Um, I haven't invested directly. I've been really focused on investing through funds of trusted partners that I know uh, understand the space and some of the technology aspects behind it. Um, but through those funds, I have the opportunity to invest a little bit more. Um, so it's really outsourcing the, the due diligence portion flow. Um, you know, all entrepreneurs, I'm sure, will understand that. Um, but uh, I, I, I think it's I think it's really understanding through that process of, of seeing these companies that are um, being considered for investment, what is happening in the space and where are the key players? And for me, you know, the smart contracts, some of the things that we can do on the real estate side especially in terms of um, the lack of affordability in Canada, but I think in a lot of places um, and thinking about how one generation was able to afford houses, how does the next generation do that? I think the answer lies in blockchain, these smart contracts, et cetera. So for me, it's about as an entrepreneur being um, the picks and shovels around uh, the business. And as I see these different companies really um, pushing the boundaries in terms of opportunities uh, in, in this space, where can I align around that? And I think there's still a lot of challenges in terms of regulation uh, with different governments and understanding um, with the public. But as uh, certain companies take that leadership um, and, and, and see some results, then other companies can come around and support it. Yeah, great, great answer. I, I couldn't agree more. I just want a, a quick message to our audience. Uh, if you're enjoying this interview, and I hope you do, some of you must be, because a uh, very interesting conversation here, cutting across blockchain and, of course, entrepreneurship and immigration, which we're going to talk a little bit more about in a second. Please give us a like, share this video, follow the channel. You know how much that helps. Thank you very much to those who do. Um, now, another hat you wear, because you do wear several, is that of an educator through your investment in Computech College almost 10 years ago. So you have an anniversary coming up. Yes. You didn't uh, remember? Start preparing. Uh, <laughs> it's, um, it's a, as I understand it, it's a private career college, uh, quite focused on immigrant Canadians um, with specific focus. There you may have an opportunity, if I may say so, but I'm curious, you must have thought about it or, or are you already incorporating blockchain in any of those courses there? Uh, our, our most highly technical program right now is on cybersecurity. And so I think the opportunities with cybersecurity and blockchain, um, there, there are some synergies there in terms of how uh, companies are looking to secure their, um, you know, critical information. If we think about the healthcare industry, the finance industry, et cetera. Um, so uh, we haven't done anything at Computech uh, uh, as of yet. Um, even, um, you know, I know when I visited the Blockchain Consortium uh, event in, in Calgary, they had a wonderful organization there um, that was doing some blockchain education. 
I can't remember the name flow, but um, I'm not sure if you. If you it's one of the colleges, route. it might be Saint or Nate, but. Yes. Yeah. So I did have some uh, good discussions with them on potentially how we could partner and, and do things together, because as you said, I think there's a huge opportunity there. Um, we're still developing it. I, I think, um, you know, what is the way we, we train adult learners, 35 to 45 age demographic, 75% of our student base are women. So it's not just about these uh, generic uh, programs that they have on blockchain that you can find maybe on YouTube, but how do we specific tailor, specifically tailor it to the needs of this community so that they have an understanding and they see opportunities in, in this space? Yeah. Um, and to be fair, I, I mean, I was just going to say, and to be fair, the blockchain industry is still very small in Canada as the proportion of the whole, notwithstanding its potential, and therefore the job opportunities are also limited and they've been even more so through the so-called crypto winter of the last two years. So yeah, I guess we want to focus on where uh, students have the most opportunity to get a job, basically, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. This is such a critical point because I feel like a lot of when people think about uh, blockchain, ev everyone's thinking about it in terms of crypto. And there are <laughs> huge opportunities there, I think. Uh, and, and I think um, uh, in, in terms of these uh, 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 companies doing well, um, you know, uh, uh, again, in, it's an early stage industry, so there's going to be good characters and bad characters, uh, but the good char characters will prevail because I think this is a necessity. Um, but to your point, I don't see enough other companies outside of the crypto space. There are some. I'm not, I'm not saying there are none, but I, I think there needs to be more so that the job opportunities are available for, uh, for graduates. Yeah, yeah. And, and what advice, more generally, what advice would you give to either entrepreneurs, which I imagine some of your students are entrepreneurs, or I mean, I believe all immigrants are in some way entrepreneurial, but um, uh, what, what advice would you give those entrepreneurs or those students um, about, you know, the opportunities that blockchain may um, provide them in the future? I mean, one one just has to look at the mobile uh, technology and the mobile industry, right? There, there is the uh, obviously the um, hardware, but the software around mobile technology is incredible. The opportunities there are incredible. Um, those are essentially the picks and shovels, right? Uh, around the massive infrastructure in terms of cell phone towers, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so, understanding that technology is the first step. Um, again, I'm, I'm going to push blockchain north here, getting that information and up to date information of what's happening is, is, is critical. Um, but then, you know, seeing where you want to play in that space and there's many places to space, uh, play uh, and then taking a deeper dive into that and, and becoming an expert in that field um, is, is really the opportunity that I see. So, you know, you can't, what's that expression? Um, you bring a horse to, to the water, but you can't force the a horse to drink, right? So get as much information as you can would be my suggestion and see if there's something in, that interests you. And then you can dive deep, dive, dive deeper. But it is important to have this information. Think about if you didn't understand uh, the opportunities in mobile technology today as an entrepreneur, you would definitely be missing out. A huge thank you to all of you for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed the interview and you like what we do, support our mission to educate, inform, and inspire Canadians and others about the blockchain revolution. Make sure to give us a like, share your comments for me or for Morali, and subscribe to the channel wherever you're watching this video. Uh, again, Morali, thank you very much. Thanks everyone for watching. Until the next time.